Today I'll be building a floating entertainment center and if you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw a sketch that I made a couple of months ago. So in this video we're going to be turning what was just an idea, this sketch here, into a real life project. The first thing we'll need to do is get this old electric chainsaw out. I like this Remington here because it can attach to a pole to cut some taller branches. Although if you have a high powered gas chainsaw, you could probably get through this job a lot faster. I never counted how many wood cookies I ended up cutting, but it was a lot more than I thought before starting this. However, paying for these gets quite expensive, so I saved a ton of money there and cleaned up some of my burn pile. I cut medium, small, smaller, and a few really large pieces to add some variety. We'll come back a little bit later and clean this thing up with some sanding. And then I laid it all out on the lawn to kind of get an idea of how many I actually need and the placement of them. I'll come back to this chainsaw a little bit later because I still didn't cut enough. As for the lumber, you'll need a full sheet of 4x8, two 1x12s that are 8 feet long, and then a couple of 1x2s that are also 8 feet long that I'll use for the border. Now I'm going to use a circular saw here to cut this to 7 feet. Really the cool thing about the dimensions of this thing is you can make it as wide. You can even cut the height and make it as tall as you want as well. So my plywood, my 1x12s, and my trim piece, one of them, are all going to be the same exact length, which I'm going to go with 7 feet. What that will do is give me one foot extra on my 1x12s that I can use for my ends of my shelves. Just to go over my cuts once more, I cut my plywood to 7 feet long and then I'll cut both of my 1x12s to 7 feet and one of my 1x2s to 7 feet. I'll finish cutting the other 1x2 much later. I'm not attaching anything yet but I'm laying out my bench and will trace out an area where I will end up pre-drilling some holes. I'll come back to these holes later to screw in construction screws from the back and into this bench. So now you can see where I traced it out. I'm gonna pre-drill within those boundaries. So I drew in red Sharpie just to show you what it'll look like, but use a pencil if you can. just sand everything down. I'm using 80 grit sandpaper at first and then I'm gonna go back over it with 150 grit sandpaper and call it a day. Much of this doesn't need to be super smooth. The bench I would like to be really smooth because it'll need to get dusted and wiped down here and there. But this is it, it's starting to drizzle so I'm gonna go in and you don't need to watch somebody sand over and over and over again. So we're gonna call that a wrap. I will be sanding these logs tomorrow so we'll hit that back up and finish painting this and or start painting this and hopefully finishing as well. So see you in a second. Everything is pretty much prepped and ready for paint and assembly. So I wiped off all of the dust and we'll first start with some primer. So there's really not much to say about painting here. Just make sure you prime first so it helps the paint actually adhere to your lumber. But other than that, just go at it. I just used your typical roller, like a wall roller, and it came out perfectly. I'll also be priming and painting every sides of all of these pieces except for the big sheet of plywood because everything else will be visible. I hate videos where people talk about how they would do something different while showing you the wrong way to do it. Well, I have no choice but to do just that. I started by spray painting my project and that was a huge mistake. I'll go through my logic on why I did this a little bit later, but I do end up painting it with a roller in the end and you'll see all that. Except for these metal brackets, I'm glad I sprayed these and I promise I'll cover that too. These are my side pieces of the bench. I'll Craig jig out two holes through the top, 
two through the bottom and one through one side, and you'll see how I use this to attach everything through this video. So don't start going ahead and Craig jigging everything until you finish this. Then for the bench top and bottom, I'll make four Craig jig holes that will be for attaching these to the plywood. If you are keeping up, you can maybe see how much structural integrity this will have and you'll see even more later, but I have pre-drilled holes from the back that will have screws. I have these Craig jig screws and then I'll have a couple of metal brackets later and some wood glue. Now I'll fasten on one inside, making sure my Craig jig holes will be inside the bench. And for now, I'll tack these together with a brad nailer before screwing them in later. The entire bench is essentially put together now, but for some of that extra oomph, I'm gonna screw them in with some Craig screws. I'm now applying some wood glue to the inside edge of the bench and we'll start the process of attaching it to the plywood. Once I get this glue all spread out, I'll make it flush with the bottom of the plywood and the sides. It's also important to note that my Craig screw holes will all be facing downward, so the only way someone could see them is if they were laying on the floor upside down, and even then, I'll be sure to paint the holes black, although I really don't care. As promised before, the reason why I'm spray painting these metal brackets here, and I have two different kinds, the shorter one and this longer one here, is to use for the bench. And I'll go out there and show you. The reason I'm filming inside is because the waterfall is just roaring out there right now because of the rain last night. And I also forgot my microphone at my primary house, so I can't dampen the noise or anything. But this is gonna be a rental property, and there's gonna be a bench here. It's not really a bench, it's a shelf for the TV but there's gonna be a couple feet on each side of the TV where people might feel tempted to sit on it. So I'm having these metal brackets installed in my case just to help re-support someone's weight. I don't know, maybe I'll need to put some decorations on it or something to just encourage people or discourage people from sitting on it. Well, you can probably hear right now, right? Somewhere over there, let's zoom in on it. It looks way farther away than it actually is. It's literally across the street there. But then you got all this. I'll use one short bracket for both sides of this bench, and then I'll use the longer brackets for the closer to the middle, about one third in. And I'll be sure to measure because these will be a little bit visible. So I'm gonna measure it one third in from one side and one third in from the other side. Time to wood glue and fasten this one by two to the very top of this piece of plywood here. And definitely double check the length of your nails. Uh, I obviously use too long of one here, but I'm way up in the mountains and I don't have any of my shorter ones with me. So I'm just gonna have to do some little hand hammering here the old fashioned way. Then my last cuts really come down to these side pieces here. So I'm just gonna measure from the top of the bench to the piece of trim that's up there and then nail them in from the back. Those holes that we pre-drilled way, way back in this video are now coming back in this step. I'm countersinking the holes, especially around the edges. This prevents the plywood from splitting, as well as helps with making the screws flush with the wood, so when I hang this entertainment center, it'll be flush with the wall. So now I'm gonna go back through all the holes with my 1 8 inch drill bit, now that I have the shelving to drill into. I have two inch construction screws here. I have a big old leftover box from other things. So I'm gonna put them through. 
And the great thing about doing this extra step is you might not really be able to see it here, but the bottom is kind of pulling away from the shelf. So by screwing that in, it should help really secure and just tighten everything up. For my case, I have an outlet right behind where this shelf is going, and you probably do as well if you're placing a TV here. We'll simply just need to cut that out, starting by drilling two holes in the corners and then coming back with the reciprocating saw to square it up. My hole ended up being pretty janky, but someday in the future I can just come back and trim it up with some 1x1s or some other type of small trim. For now, I'll just put some decor in front of it like a succulent or something. On the top of the bench here, I'll need a place for the cables to actually go from the TV down into the outlet. And so I'm just going to drill out this hole here. Just make sure it's big enough to fit a plug into. And then lastly, I'm just sanding this up to clean it up before I apply a little bit of paint. Again, I'm spray painting this a little bit, which that does come in handy. But again, I'll be actually painting this whole thing a little bit later. I'm about to show you the process that I took to paint this entertainment center, but this is the process that you should not do yourself. I thought it would be a great idea to spray paint this entertainment center, but I didn't realize how big it was going to be even though I had the dimensions. And I also thought I was going to be using more of your traditional plywood, which would have a lot of the grains and imperfections on there that you can't even smooth out with the sander. Well, in this case, I got really smooth plywood and it's bigger than I thought. So I ended up needing like three of these cans and it's still not completely done. So I would need four cans at $5 a pop when I could have just bought a little $10 pint and rolled it on. So it took twice as long, it was twice as expensive and it's not even getting me all the coverage that I need. So now I'm coming back and just painting it anyway. That was unfortunate. Don't spray paint this, just take the time to roll it and it'll be a lot easier. Before I put the very last coat of paint on this, I'm doing a very, very light sanding on this because a lot of the fibers from the wood, or the grain, I guess it's fibers, from the wood started sticking up when it got a little wet. So I'm just gonna sand it, wipe it down, and then paint it with the final coat. And now I'm gonna put a little bit of protective finish on this. Again, I sprayed instead of rolling some kind of polyurethane on there, which in this case is just fine. And again, the logic here was I was gonna put the wood ends on this shelf before protecting everything all together, but I decided to go this route and it came out perfect. Now it's time to put the wood cookies on. So I went and picked up some of the nails that are the right length, a little brush to apply the glue, and then the wood glue itself. So you can see how clear and polished these wood ends look and it's time to put them on. The way I figured out my layout was by applying the big ones first and then doing the medium sized ones and then smaller and then filling in the gaps with the tiny pieces. I did it in that order and it turned out pretty uniform. It turns out I need a whole lot more of these cuts though so I went ahead and did that. One thing that I found that helps instead of sanding all this down, which takes a while, grab some scissors, just cut it off. Then it's much easier to sand it later. If you thought any part of this process was tedious before, well, get ready for this. We need to wood glue each and every one of these pieces and set it back in the spot that we found it and then let it dry, then come back and nail it in. In case you're wondering, the wood glue does need to be spread out on these cuts and it's extremely important because it's not just there to adhere to the plywood, it's also there to keep these ends from splitting. The tree rings, once dry, make for easy cracking points, so we want to glue to hold them together. Additionally, I didn't shoot this, but my wife had helped clear coat, not all, but many of these wood pieces. Again, to make them a smoother finish, easier to dust and clean in the future, and to help hold them together. That's not super vital, but it's worth mentioning for sure. We used a matte polyurethane, so you can't even tell visually. Ah, you can see one of the tree cookies right there fell, so that's an easy way to determine where you missed one. 
I was originally planning on nailing these through the back and onto these logs, but it would be really hard to shoot some of these without measuring every single one because you are shooting from the back and you won't be able to see where they're at necessarily. It's all a guessing game. But these nails are extremely tiny, so it makes no difference to me. I'm going to mark my studs with some painter's tape here. I'm not using a stud finder because I can clearly see in my paneling here where my studs are, but just use a stud finder if you need one. Put some tape there so you know where to screw this thing in. And make sure you put it up high enough to where you can actually see it once you get this on the wall. Now I need to line up my outlet with this hole that I made here, so that will be kind of tricky. That's why the height for me is pretty important. I'm still going to be short by a couple of inches. You tried, Box. You tried. So as you saw, I'm still about two or three inches short from where I need to be because the outlet is there. Also, I have a baseboard heater here, so the higher, the better anyways. Um, to an extent. You don't want it too high, right? That's good enough. It should work. So the hole is a little crooked that I cut. I'll probably end up trimming it up with like a little one by one piece, paint it black, you'll barely even be able to see it. So before I forget, one design feature that I would change if I were to do this again, is I would make this cubby here a lot smaller, a lot shorter. It, that's how I had it in my head, that's how I had it on the sketch. But when it came to the end here, when I cut off the remnants of this one by 12, right? I cut this to seven feet long. I think it's a one by 12 or 10, whatever. I cut it to seven feet long, so I used the one foot scrap left over as my ends. So those one foot ends combined with the half inch here, the half inch width of that, it made this closer to 13, 14 inches tall. And I wanted it more around 10 inches. Now it's a huge cubby. If I were to do it again, I would cut these end pieces a little bit shorter and then make this closer to around 10 inches. Once I get it level, I'll install some temporary screws to hold it up in place. And then I'll take out a screw one at a time, drill out a larger hole, and install four lag bolts, one in each corner that attaches to a stud. I'll put in a few more smaller screws through the middle studs and behind the TV. I could always come back with smaller log cookies to cover those if needed. really wish I made something like this for my house. There's just no room for it where I currently live. All right, guys and girls, I've made some mistakes along the way while building this, but it came out beautifully and almost identical to the design I had created in my head. Most of the projects I make come from ideas I found around the web and I make modifications to it. This is actually an original idea. There's nothing like this that I have found online. So you're welcome to steal it as long as you hit that like button down below. You can copy me all you want as long as you do that. I hope you enjoyed the process of making this. If you're gonna make it yourself, please comment down below. Let me know how the process is going for you and tag me on Instagram if you finish it. Thanks y'all, come visit my Airbnb. Links are down in the description below, up on Beach Mountain. Come take a vacation here. I'll see you later, bye.